this review is a three-part series. If you didn't see our positive review, you can check it out in the card or via the end card. In this video, we're going to be focusing on all the negative parts of the movie, and the third video will be discussion as to how it could have been better. Now, be warned, there are going to be spoilers in this video, so if you have not seen the movie and you wish to, leave now. Now, I feel like we have to issue a warning. There are going to be a lot of negative things that we're going to point out about the movie. This does not mean that we hated Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, as I personally loved it simply because it's a part of the franchise and it features dinosaurs. However, this video is going to be based on our opinion from a neutral observatory standpoint at least as much as possible. Okay, let's get into all the negative things about Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom. The number one thing is the story. I feel as though there was a lot of misdirection in this movie. It was so obvious that they were paying homage to the previous movies, especially Jurassic Park, the first movie. However, it's almost as though the director did this to death. It became so annoying after a while. Okay, so the homage portion where Zia gets out of the truck to see the Brachiosaurus is so reminiscent of Ellie getting out of the Jeep in Jurassic Park to see the Brachiosaurus for the first time in the flesh. That was beautiful. They also did that with the first part of the movie, the guy with the yellow raincoat, which is a callback to Dennis Nedry, who was also in the rain working on something in a yellow raincoat. Even the Dilophosaurus trills calling in the background was reminiscent of that very scene. Rexy chasing him was reminiscent of the T-Rex chase, but then on and on it went. When Maisie was locked in that manual elevator, that straight out copied the scene from the first movie with Lex when she got stuck under one of those cabinets and the raptor was coming after her. When Owen was going towards the Jeep, that was from the first movie. When he was going to find Blue, that was the Jeep that I think fell down from the tree that Timmy was in in the first movie. Then a similar kitchen scene when Owen and Claire and Maisie were hiding from Ripper. That was a callback to the first movie with the kitchen scene with the raptors. Or what about the volcano scene? That's a callback to when the Gallimimus were stampeding Grant, Lex, and Tim, and they were hiding behind that log. In Jurassic World 2, we saw the same scene being reenacted as dinosaurs were fleeing from the volcano, and Owen and his friends were hiding behind the gyrosphere. Or what about a callback to the Lost World, when Owen and the others were watching with binoculars from far away as mercs abused the captured dinosaurs, like those mercs or those captors did in the Lost World? As someone who was so familiar with the first movie, I just kept seeing scenes from the first movie, and after a while, or after the first three times of this being done, it starts to feel like the director's just ripping off the first movie and not putting any creativity into making something new or creating new terrifying circumstances. Next was the writing. I gotta admit, this movie was very action-packed and very fun as an adventure-type movie. But as for the suspense and horror, I didn't really feel much of that. It honestly felt like I was watching a cartoon and the Indoraptor was Wiley the Coyote. The scene where Claire and Owen were trapped in that trailer with Rexy was exciting, and although the animatronic model looked amazing, it was so blatantly obvious that it was an animatronic. I feel like the first Jurassic Park did it a much better execution of the animatronic movements for the T-Rex. I understand how much work has to go into mobilizing these things, but the finished product is not supposed to look like it's struggling to convince us it's real. Also, when Claire goes outside to free Owen from the hairy T-Rex situation, the truck is not even moving. With all of Rexy's weight and her wriggling around, the truck would at least be wiggling from side to side, but it was still as a dead grandmother. The dialogue was very lackluster, and I felt like I was watching a Broadway. The only characters I really enjoyed, to be honest, were Zia, the Dino Vet, and Franklin. Star-Lord doesn't count, since he's always quirky and everyone loves him. And although Bryce Styles Howard is very cute, she's not believable to me as a character, and honestly is very shallow. Even the chemistry between her and Owen seems non-existent. Chris Pratt's performance as her former lover seems more believable than hers. I know it seems like I'm ranting or nitpicking here, but I'm just being painfully honest. We don't set out to look for all the bad things, but as film reviewers as well, we can't be too biased to completely ignore all the blatant inaccuracies and flaws that this movie has. The bad guys were very shallow and honestly felt like cartoon villains. The lack of credible dialogue did not help either. I feel like Thanos from Avengers Infinity War was a much better villain than how these men were portrayed. 
I know to you that may seem like an unfair comparison, but the dialogue is what really drove it home for Thanos. The way he moved, and the things he said, and the way he said them made him believable as a character. Mills is just a money-hungry bad guy that Scooby-Doo and the gang have to stop. And honestly, that execution to make him a believable villain just fails. The other issue with the movie was that it was just too cheesy. And by cheesy, I mean it almost seems like this was a Jurassic Park parody. It's as if they were saying, let's take the first Jurassic Park movie and make it an Indiana Jones style one. Dinosaurs randomly attacking people like an adventure theme park in a situation where they totally would not be attacking people is one thing. But then you have the Indoraptor smirking and acting like a cartoon character. What? If this was any other dinosaur movie, I could let that go, but because this is the Jurassic Park franchise and they're supposedly paying homage to the first movie, to me, as an avid fan of the original, it feels like a slap in the face. Rexy quickly making her way into the scene to yet again take down someone only to do that very cheesy, unnecessary roar at the end of everything she does and every time she comes in to save the day just feels like the creators are flexing the dinosaurs. It's like they feel the need to make the dinosaurs roar to continually say to the audience, look at this horrible, terrible, very cool dinosaur roaring, guys. It would have been so much more majestic if after Rexy ate Mills, oh, by the way, her eating Mills, another callback from the Lost World when the two T-Rexes ate Eddie by tearing him in half. <laughs> It would have been more believable for Rexy to just growl in a low tone and slink into the shadows or look from side to side, just observing her surroundings to then slowly and majestically walk away, possibly like a real T-Rex would. Her snapping at the Carnotaurus was cool, but then she did that roar in the same pose that she did in Jurassic Park at the end. Another callback? How many scenes are they going to rip off from the first movie before it actually becomes Jurassic Park? I found myself rolling my eyes and just thinking what a waste of film time this was. The writing was not the best at all. Jurassic Park 3 honestly did a better job, and when you factor in a scary Indoraptor smirking like he's a stud in a breeding pen, the Indominus Rex seems like a more serious character in terms of a villainous dinosaur. Let's talk about Ripper, the Indoraptor. The hybrid was an amazing design, and I honestly think that one of the best things about the movie was the design for this creature. So, imagine my disappointment when I found that it barely got any screen time. And by that I mean that not long after it was released, it wasn't even an innovative way that it got away, but after it was released, it was killed. Seriously, hand clap for Gaming Beaver who saw through this, which makes me more mad because it was given away in the trailer. They also foreshadowed the hell out of that gun being able to control it, only for Claire to use it for a few seconds to almost kill it. What? It would have been more interesting to see the Indoraptor square off against some other larger dinosaur, but okay, here's the thing. They spent a copious amount of time foreshadowing that Blue was supposedly going to be a mother to it for that not to happen. That didn't even make any sense to me. Because if their whole plan was to capture Blue for the sake of having her become a mother to Ripper, why would they wait so long to get her? Ripper is essentially an adult. At what point did Dr. Wu actually think they were going to form a bond? Hey, maybe it was for other hybrids they're making in the future, but as for Blue being able to control Ripper at this stage in time when Ripper's already full grown, them writing that in made it absolutely no sense whatsoever. They set that up only to disappoint us in the end by not delivering. Blue saves Owen, but there's nothing that transitions into her doing that. We don't get a cutaway shot of her hearing Owen's voice or hearing the Indoraptor to even have it connect her being in the room at that point in time to save him. It just seems completely random. Then, like an arcade character that just won a match after she falls down on Ripper, she, in her weird CGI movement, bobs up and down and just roars in victory and runs off. What? I would have figured they would have panned the camera a little closer to Blue as she's heaving, since she's still healing from an injury. You remember the gunshot wound at the beginning of the movie? And 
since she also still healing from that injury just did a full-on brawl with this thing and also just fell from quite a height we would have seen her slowly before getting off of the indoraptor sniffing at it tentatively as if she's trying to figure out what it is then it would have been so poetic to see the camera pan to the indoraptor's eyes as it looks at blue to then cut back to blue's eyes looking at it where you can see a momentary connection between the two right before Ripper dies. This would have made sense because earlier in the movie, they make a point to say that Blue shows concern and empathy in Owen's blogs. It would have made sense for her to show empathy for a creature that shares so much of her DNA, and this would have essentially sort of rewarded us with what they set up in the lab when Dr. Wu was saying that Blue would be a mother to the Indoraptor. But no, they just do a cheesy victory dance with Blue as she runs away to go back and meet Owen. We were expecting her at some point to tell Ripper and Dinosaurese to back down or something, but that never happens. The models of the dinosaurs were beautiful, and so were the little battles they did here and there, but I honestly feel like a lot of this movie was rushed and time was put into places that were really unnecessary, and not enough was put into scenes that should have been shown. They showed us in the trailer the scene with Rexy and the lion as though something amazing was going to happen only for us to watch the movie and see exactly what we saw in the trailer. Nothing happened before that and nothing happened after that. What? How disappointing. If you guys didn't know this, there was a scene after the credits. A few of us were waiting in the movie theater. My colleague at this point in time wants to just leave and all we get for us waiting so long is a few seconds of some pteranodons on a skyscraper in a large city just randomly landing there because reasons. Of all the footage of all the dinosaurs they could have shown, why that? Again, lack of creativity. In The Lost World, Jurassic Park, they ended the film with a pteranodon. In Jurassic Park 3, they ended the film with pteranodons in jurassic world the last dinosaur attack scene consisted of pteranodons why in the hell would you use them again trust me although we love the movie because it was jurassic park we feel as though it could have been done a lot better and we honestly expected more from it one of my colleagues even said that if chris pratt had not been in the movie it would have just been a dvd quality film the other issue Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom had was that if you didn't watch the previous films, especially the first Jurassic Park movie and the Jurassic World movie, you would come into this not knowing what the hell was going on. This seems to be more specifically geared towards fans of the Jurassic Park franchise, and they made it in such a way that little kids would enjoy it and that the fans who have already watched the series would enjoy and understand all the callbacks. I don't want to be sitting down during a film throughout its entirety to constantly say, oh, look, that's just like from the first movie. Oh, oh, then well, look at this. That's from the second movie. Oh, look, another scene from the first movie again. I feel like that was abused. And so I reiterate that Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, although action-packed into a neat little fun adventure, really felt like a parody to Jurassic Park. There's more that we have to say in critique of the film, but we're going to stop right here. In conclusion, we believe that most people who enjoyed the film did so out of bias for the franchise and for the dinosaurs. A few people we spoke to who were not familiar with the Jurassic Park franchise and saw this movie claimed they had no idea what the hell was going on. Things were very jarring and did not connect well, and it was not as scary and suspenseful as they were led to believe. We can totally see where the people who gave it negative reviews are coming from. If I were going to rate it as a movie alone, I would rate it honestly... A 4.5 out of 10. The acting and the misdirection of the story is very confusing for audiences just coming into the franchise. This movie just seems to be setting up the third Jurassic World. However, a lot of people coming into this movie won't know that, and so that's unfair to them. If you were to ask me personally how I would rate the Jurassic Park movies on the scale from best to worst, it would be in this order. Jurassic Park 1. Jurassic Park 2 The Lost World. Jurassic Park 3. Jurassic World and then Fallen Kingdom. Coincidentally, in the order they were actually released, Jurassic Park 1 is a classic and nailed the horror and suspense elements with such elegance that it's so hard to duplicate, apparently. Jurassic Park 
2, The Lost World, took those elements and added to them. It wasn't as good as the first, but it added in all new situations, which made it interesting in its own movie that even other new movies that are mainstream are even copying off of certain scenes from The Lost World. It featured a callback to King Kong without it being so staunch in your face, and they didn't abuse the callbacks either. Jurassic Park 3 is where the cheesiness started to happen. However, you still really believe that people were in danger as you saw them getting killed and you saw blood. It was an adventure that you actually feel had danger connected with it. Jurassic World seemed to have only been geared towards kids, to be honest, and the Indominus Rex was not as scary as they intended. Although the scene with Owen in the truck right after Indy escape was really terrifying. Fallen Kingdom just seems like an amalgamation of the first and second and fourth movie, and it was essentially a two-hour recap. It also leaves a lot of loose ends, like what happened to the Mosasaurus and all the other dinosaurs? What's going on with Maisie and the human cloning? So it's obviously setting up the stage for Jurassic World 3, a movie that just serves to set up another movie without any real meat to its own storyline is not executed properly. An example of how this is done well is in movies like Back to the Future, or even most recently, from this video's time period, Infinity War. We got to see enough action with our heroes fighting in that movie, although you would have had to see the previous movies, but you also get to see the backstory of Thanos and Gamora and the character development of the villain that they're going to have to defeat, but yet it can stand alone as its own movie. So did Black Panther. Thanos, a complex character that's not just pure evil, is what makes it so amazing. Thanos was a star of Avengers Infinity War. So when you walked away, you felt as though you walked away with something when you finished the movie. The screen time for the Indoraptor in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was wasted and not nearly as long enough as it should have been. It didn't have enough background aside from people just telling other people what it was. So that's our honest opinion from a negative standpoint. At this point, everyone is just coming to see Chris Pratt in blue. No one is coming to be scared. Everyone leaves laughing. I remember when I saw Jurassic Park for the first time. I left feeling like I just witnessed these people, the characters on screen, having survived a horrific circumstance. And I also felt a deep respect for the monsters they left behind on the island. I feel like the respect for dinosaurs as powerful, dangerous, and majestic creatures has been etched out, and they're the equivalent of My Little Ponies. There's still hope for them to redeem the flaws made in this movie. Bayona did the best he could with what he was given, but I think he tried a little bit too hard to please Steven Spielberg with all these freaking homage scenes. Dare I say it, and I'm actually eating my words, I'm more hopeful since Colin Trevorrow is going to be taking the wheels again. I would rather it be Steven Spielberg or even James Cameron, but let's hope that since Colin Trevorrow has had experience with the franchise, that he can make it end with a bang. All right, bring on the hailfire. Let us know how you guys feel about this. Again, we also did a positive review, even though that video was significantly shorter than this one, because to be honest, the flaws needed to have been discussed so that we can explain why they were flaws, why they were negative. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.